to your body peace and harmony with you here today zooming in on some of the really tough to crack qualities of the covert narcissist I've had a lot of viewers who are really working hard and striving hard to understand the personality characteristics of the covert narcissist so I want to do a little bit of a video expanding and exploring on some of their qualities what I'm gonna call an impenetrable sort of quietness, um, an impenetrable sort of air of superiority. Um, impenetrable meaning really there's nothing you can do to get through to them. There's nothing you can really do to help them get to be opened up. They are so reticent, they are so reserved, they are so prone to shut out people, they are so prone to be tight-lipped. They are so prone to dismiss and ignore the needs of others. This is really what presents in the psychological community when um, there are issues with this type of person. So either the person will um, present on their own uh, with relationship conflicts, uh, they will come with sexual difficulties, income difficulties, uh, marital difficulties, or issues with their children. Or, you know, the spouse will bring them in and saying, you know, I'm just not happy. Um, you know, uh, my spouse is not fulfilling my needs. They're not fulfilling their obligations. And so they're experiencing really sort of a communication breakdown. And it's this communication breakdown that essentially is the one that brings them into psychological counseling and need of help, mentorship, things of that nature. Now, um, the impenetrable sort of side is one that the narcissist, the covert narcissist, will really hold fast to. So they, they create this external shell, they create this facade, they create this mask in order to belay and really sort of hide an inferior sense of insu uh, insuperiority or insecurity. So they've, they've developed this essentially as a way to adapt. So can we forgive them for this? Can we let them go for this? Uh, perhaps we can. Um, it's, it's my position in studying psychology and education and working in social services and what have you that absolutely um, it is our role to uh, judge less and love more. So yet this does not mean that you have to stay in abusive situations. Absolutely positively. You know, there, there's, you know, there's a reason for people's behavior. Uh, there's an origin. There's a cause to it. Um, Yet it does not mean that you should, you know, pay their price and, you know, live in an abusive, hostile, violent situation, um, you know, or being neglected. I mean, this is, this can have life altering consequences. So I want to, I want you to understand that oftentimes this, the covert narcissist will maintain this impenetrable sort of stance. I mean, they're not really emotionally available oftentimes. Um, to be available in, in relationships. So it becomes pathological, meaning unhealthy in nature when it's used to excess and when it's really created and fostered in a way so as to hurt others. In, order, in other words, to outwardly neglect others, to outwardly uh, you know, abuse others emotionally through neglect. So it, it's more in their um, smugness that they tend to abuse and hurt and defile others. So not being there when they should be emotionally available, um, not being loving, not being caring, not meeting people in the middle. That's where the abuse sort of essentially takes place. And that's oftentimes what presents then in the psychological community. So can this exterior really be shaken off? Um, can they really improve? Can they move beyond it? Well, a lot of it really does you know, uh, relate to uh, that person and where they fall on that scale of uh, narcissist pathology. You know, how, you know, how, to what degree are they able to see this? To what degree are they able to understand that they, what role that they have played in creating an abusive environment? What, to what degree are they able to understand what they have done to perpetuate, to perpetuate it and to what degree can they take then responsibility to correct things moving forward. Oftentimes the issue that we see in the pathological narcissist is that even though despite their abuse, they've absolutely positively felt they have done nothing wrong.